19. The book of Genesis, chapter number 19. No, it's not what you're thinking. Uh, I'm going to use the verse out of it. Genesis, chapter number 19, this evening. Um, uh, Genesis, chapter number 19. We have a, a family on a bus route that I'd like for us to help some. If anybody has any um, furniture, maybe that you don't need or want to get rid of or something, don't have to be brand new, please let me know tonight at church. And uh, we'll, I'll talk about the furniture, uh, uh, couch, bed, uh, you know, stuff like that, tables, chairs. All right. Genesis chapter number 19. Genesis chapter number 19. The Bible said there, after Lot's wife looked back, turned into a pillar of salt in verse 26, look at verse 27. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Right in the middle of that story of Sodom burning, his nephew, no telling what happened to him, his family members down there, Bible said Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he goes stand before the Lord. It sounds like he did that uh, regularly. Now, everybody in here, listen to me for a few minutes. The sermon that I'm going to preach tonight will not be, I mean, if you was rating sermons, it sure wouldn't be in the top 10, 20, 30 that maybe you think that we preach here. I, sometimes people come up to me and they'll say, uh, they try to be nice, and they'll say, oh, Brother Danny, that was the best one I've ever heard. I have the best one I've heard yet. Brother Danny, that was a, that's right up there in the top. You know, they, and you, you, know, you know, I understand what you're saying, and, but this wouldn't be one of them sermons. This ain't one of them sermons that you uh, would, would sit there and be sort of semi-entertained by. But I'm going to tell you something. The sermon I'm going to preach tonight might be the most important sermon that I've preached here in a long, long time. Maybe. Abraham went and stood before the Lord. And I'm going to talk to you tonight about if everybody in our church had that habit, part of your life, we call it the quiet time. The time when you get with God every single morning of your life. Now, it doesn't have to be morning, but morning seems to be scripturally and historically the best time when great Christians, I try to learn a lot from great Christians. I look back and I see all them men that God used, like John Wesley, who would rise at like four in the morning and, and, and spend two hours with the Lord. Like Joe Parson, the guy that I preached revival, I got saved in, who would get up every morning at five o'clock, spend a couple of hours with the Lord. I read about all... Uh, every every single great man or woman that's ever accomplished much for God had a strict, committed habit of somewhere, someplace, sometime during the day that it was just them and the Lord. Now, I would encourage you tonight uh, to do that. They said uh, years ago, they had these bunch of missionary candidates come and they were candidating to go to the mission field. And, and they... And back then, you know, they, you had no way of knowing somebody. You couldn't do a background check on them or anything like that. Had no way of knowing who would succeed and who was dependable and who wasn't. And um, they said uh, the way they judged them missionaries was their quiet time. They said if a person will spend time with God every day, just them and the Lord sometime, then you can pretty well count on that person staying right with the Lord. The, uh, Billy Sunday went to a, con a convert one time. This man got saved, and Billy Sunday was going to counsel him. He come to Billy Sunday, and he said, Preacher, I want, to, I want to be a good Christian. What do I do? And Billy Sunday said, every day, he said, you spend 15 minutes letting God talk to you. That's the Bible, reading the Bible. He said, you spend 15 minutes, you talking to God. That's praying. And he said, you spend 15 minutes talking to others about God. And he said, if you'll do that, you will be a successful Christian. If you'll spend 15 minutes, and I, I think it should be much more than that, of course. I do. Try to. There are times when I don't uh, make it that long. But I promise you, I do every day. Seven days a week, 365 days a year. I promise you. 
I don't even remember. I don't even remember the last day that I hadn't spent time alone with God. I don't even remember it. It's probably been 30 years. And I, I, I have found out that I've got to have it. A, a, a plant, a tree has to have uh, uh, air and sunshine and water to live. And a, the body has to have air and sunshine and water and food to live. And your spiritual life has to have, has to have a, a time with just you and God. Now, if I were to ask everybody in here this, this evening, raise your hand. Uh, don't, but if I were to, uh, if, if every one of you has, has de developed a definite routine, ha habitual part of your life where every day you go to a certain place. Now, obviously, when you're out of town or, you know, you're at work, on vacation, or like me this week, gone, I couldn't go to my regular place, but I made a place. And my place uh, is up in the closet up, uh, in our bedroom. I have a walk, walk in, a big old closet, it's on top of the house and slanted. So it's the floor ain't level, but I, I got a little mat up there and a pillow and I get right down there and that's where I pray. And that's where I meet God alone every single day of my life. Said that man one time got married, hadn't been married just a little while and he, and he, uh, he come in and he's, his new wife didn't know nothing. You know, girls nowadays don't know how to boil water and, uh, they, uh, they uh, ain't got no sense cook nothing. And he said she, he went in the kitchen. They'd been married a few weeks. And, and um, so there was, a, there was a, a recipe out on the table and a bowl of eggs and it looked like flour and stuff like that. And his wife was like this. He said, she was like, he said, honey, you all right? And he got to looking around and said, the next thing on that it said, don't stir for 15 minutes. And she said, that nut. Oh, that. Now, that's a perfect picture. That's a perfect picture. Listen, don't life. I've known some that I wouldn't put that past. <laughs> Honest to goodness. I, I, uh, but and that's a perfect picture of, of that. Now, when, you, when, I, when, I, when I go to pray, I, I don't want nobody to bother me. I said, don't, don't stir. Did that go over your head, Carrie? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you can play piano. <laughs> like that guy got married. You hear about that guy got married and his wife, his wife was an opera singer. And boy, all you ever say, that's the only time you'd ever seen her. She's singing, whoo, you know, doing all that kind of stuff. Said they got married and uh, he, he'd never seen her without all her makeup, fake eyelashes and wig and everything else. And, and he, and he, and he uh, uh, looked up and seen her that morning and said, my God, honey, sing. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, somebody else. Uh, but you, you know what? Uh, sorry about that. That's mean. But uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, that I, You don't want to stir. There's a certain little guy in here tonight. Won't name no names. Uh, but sometimes when I'm praying, he will come and uh, jump on my back. And, and I, I think it's just the devil. It's just the devil. Uh, and, uh, the, the, the devil. And I feel like the devil. And I, uh, now, I didn't say your name. Uh, he's going about it like this. <laughs> uh, but uh, he wants to play. He goes, Daddy, Daddy. I said, come on, pray. We're going to pray. I get him down like that. And we'll pray for a minute. And, but I, I won't. I won't. Every day when I get up, every day when I get up, I take my Bible and I start reading my chapters and I read. And I'm, you know, I'm going through, I'm being on my New Testament. I'm start, I've already started my third time New Testament this year, like I always do. And I'm in Isaiah and the Old Testament, right on the schedule, right where I'm supposed to be. Hallelujah. And uh, I'll, I, after I read my Bible, then I go down there and I close that door, like the Bible says. When thou hast entered into thy closet, close thy door. That's, that's significant. What that saying is, I'm shutting the world out and I'm letting the Savior, uh, my Master, in. That's symbolic of what that the shutting that door means. And you you can do that uh in in your back room. You can do that in your car. Shut the uh, just shut the world out and let the Lord be out first place. So uh I want to talk about that just for a minute tonight and hope it'll be a blessing to you. Uh you you go early. I I found out that early is always uh, usually the best time. The greatest I've ever known in my life got up first thing in the morning and spent time with God. 
Maybe you have to leave for work at uh, 6 o'clock, maybe 5.30. Some of y'all maybe start work at 6 o'clock. So you leave at 5, 5.15. There are people in here. Uh, I was with Brother Smokey all week. He, gets, he leaves work for work at 2 o'clock a.m. Every morning. He goes to work at 2 o'clock. Pastor's church goes to work at 2 o'clock in the morning because he works in Washington, D.C. And they get in there before all the traffic starts and get on their day. They put up drywall. And, uh, and there might be people in here. Uh, is there anybody in here who has to get up earlier than 4 o'clock? Anybody in here on a regular basis? Sandy does. Dottie does. Richie does. Joe does. Okay. That's pretty early. That's pretty early. So that people like that, you know what they, they had to do? They got to go to bed early, buddy. They got to go to bed at an early hour. I mean, they can't fool around and talk, sit up and talk half a night. Uh, they got to go to bed. And if, if it, it, it might be that you spend time with the Lord before you go to bed at night. I'm certainly not saying that's a bad idea. But normally, typically, historically, it's always better to do it in the morning. In other words, if you have to leave at 6 o'clock in the morning and it takes all you can do to get ready by 6 o'clock, maybe get up, maybe get yourself in the habit of getting up 30 minutes earlier, read four or five chapters, pray 10 or 15 minutes, and get in a habit of that. Get in a habit of that. You know what? If everybody in our church would do this, if 90% of y'all wouldn't do like you usually do, 90% of y'all sit there and you like my preaching and you have absolutely no intention of doing it at all. You just like it. And uh, I don't, I mean, I, I ain't fussing at you, but you know, the Bible does say you're not just supposed to be a hearer of the word, but a what? Doer of the word. And if what I say is scriptural, uh, you're supposed to be a doer of it. So when I say spend time with the Lord, that is scriptural. And, and I would encourage everybody here to do it. Do it early. Have that special place. Do it daily. Not occasionally, daily. Not a couple times a week. Seven days a week. And uh, David Brainerd did. That's what uh, John Wesley did. That's what Henry Martin did, the great missionary. Uh, the Bible said in 2 Peter 3 and verse 18, Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, learn how to do it. Learn how to do it. Learn how to do it. And the purpose of a, of a quiet time is to keep our fellowship right with God. It's to stay in touch with the Lord. It's to keep prayed up. It's uh, to face today's trials. It's to help maintain systematic Bible study. It's not just random Bible. You know, okay, Lord, why don't me read today? You know, not, not like that. It teaches you to systematically read and study the Bible. You understand that the Bible don't just say read it. It says study it. Now, you are supposed to just read it, casual reading it, and you are supposed to study it. Not supposed to read it. This is for all the Sunday school teachers, uh, preachers in here. We have a tendency to do this. I am. We have a tendency when we read the Bible of we're, we're looking for uh, outline, looking for sermons and, and stuff like that. You, you better make sure that you read your Bible just because you love the Bible and you want to read God's Word and you want the Lord to speak to you out, out of it. All that other stuff's necessary, but make sure that that's not the only reason uh, that, that you read the Bible. I, I don't have any problem. Um, I, I can get up early a lot easier than I used to. Uh, Carrie told me the other night, she said, Daddy, uh, you're getting too old to drive all night like that. And I said, honestly, honestly, it's easier now than it was when I was, I was lazy when I was 20 and 30. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I'd go all the time, but I wanted to sleep more. The older you get, you don't require, I reckon, a, as much sleep. I don't know, but it seems that way. But how, whatever you got to do, whatever you got to do, go to bed, lay that stupid phone, down and you say well I can't sleep well you'll never sleep like that you'll entertain yourself another hour and a half you'll never go to sleep and when you're tempted to get that phone put the phone down and just say Lord please bless this one bless that one bless this one. and the devil will say why don't you get your phone and see uh, you know what's, what the weather's going to be tomorrow Lord please bless this one Lord please bless that the devil will say why don't you get your phone and, and uh, uh, you, you can't do nothing uh, without that stupid phone. And, you can, and the devil will use that to hinder you from your quiet time. Now, go to bed at a decent time. Put your phone. I, I just wondered. I was thinking this evening. I thought, God, what would this camp meeting be like? If everybody here tonight, and I know we've still got some folks out tonight that are not here, uh, gone, sick, so forth and so on. But if this crowd here tonight, 
You get all these people together, it's a pretty good crowd here tonight. You get all these people here together. If everybody here, if everybody here would do what I'm saying tonight and say, God, I'm going to spend time with you every day. And I'm going to keep in touch. And I'm going to keep the line clear between me and you. And I'm going to stay right. By the time the camp meeting comes, it would be just bubbling over like this. Where it, where it boils over and your saucer gets a blessing. Your cup gets full and the saucer gets a blessing. All right? Amen? Drinking from your saucer, like Miss Ugg said. Now, let's talk just for a minute about your material for uh, sure your quiet time. Your material for your quiet time should not be uh, the latest book that Brother So-and-so wrote. Nothing wrong with the latest book that Brother uh, so and so Nothing wrong with Christian books. But I, I don't have time to read a lot of Christian books if I read my Bible like I'm supposed to. And by the way, the Bible is the best book uh, 90% of y'all, you, you read that book, ask the Holy Ghost to give you wisdom, you'll know what to do with your kids. You'll know how to, how, what to do with your marriage. You'll know what to do with your finances. You'll know the Lord will put it in you. This is a supernatural book. Them other books are not inspired. Just the Bible is inspired. Word of God. I'm not saying they're all wrong. I do have commentaries. I do have Bible uh, uh, topical I mean, commentaries and and uh, concordances and and things about stuff like that. I got it. I got all them. And I do reference them. But brother, that's the book that I spend my time with every morning. And my heart gets in there and worry about The old song says, I come to the garden alone while the dew is fresh on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God disposes. And He walks with me. And He talks with me. And He tells me I'm His own. And the joy we share uh, as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I'm not. it's not going to be a great sermon, but you better hear what I'm saying. Every great victory that I've ever won in my Christian life was not with a gang of guys praying. Never has been. I like it. We went in there and prayed a while ago. Every time I was facing a battle that I thought I couldn't get through, it was just me and the Lord on my face saying, God, help me. There are battles you can't fight no other way. Can't do it. Every time I need victory over sin, when I need victory over sin, I don't get a bunch of people say, hey, will y'all pray for me? Nothing wrong with that. And I do do it. Do you know where I've got the victory? By myself. With my face in a pillow or a mattress or in a piece of carpet. Saying, God help me. God help me. God help me. There's where you get the victory. There's where you get the victory. That's how to get your assurance. You say, Brother Danny, I have doubts. I have doubts. Sometimes I don't even know if I'm saved or not. I tell you how you get them. I tell you how you don't get them. I uh, sitting watching TikTok all day long. You'll never have to get no assurance like that. Uh, faith coming by here and here and by the Word of God. You get that Bible down and you read it and you read it and you read it and you read it and you pray and you pray and you pray and you pray. And you pray. It won't be long. Well, as somebody said, you've heard this many times, one of my favorite poems. I met God in the morning. When my day was at its best, and his presence came like sunrise, like the glory in my breast. All day long his presence lingered. All day long he stayed with me. And we sailed in perfect calmness over a very troubled sea. Other ships were blown and battered. Other ships were sore distressed. But the wind that seemed to drive them brought peace and rest. Then I thought of other mornings with a keen remorse of mine. When I too had loosed the moorings with the Savior left behind. So I think I know the secret. Learn from many a troubled way. You must seek the Lord in the morning if you have Him during the day. Have you ever jumped up and thought, I'm late. I've got to do this. I've got, I've got to do that. You got, and you jumped up without reading your Bible and praying. And it just seems like nothing goes right all along. You ever, I've done that so many times. And, and just one thing after another, one obstacle, and I think, this can't be just coincidence. And something else happens. And something else happens. And something else. And buddy, but sometimes I'll get up and I'll spend extra time with the Lord and I'll stay in my prayer closet and I'll just get soaked, brother. Just let him, let him soak me in the Holy Ghost. And it seems like all day long you're just riding, riding away. And it seems like you're you're in charge. I mean, you, it's like you got the victory. It's not, it's not like all your troubles were like this. You're on top of them. 
and sit them on top of you. You still got them, but you're on top. Amen? You're on top. Stay on top. That's why you stay on top. And let me tell you this, too. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have a lot to say, so listen carefully. Let me tell you this, too. If you're struggling with sin, I ain't stupid. I've been pastoring church uh, 46 years. I've been preaching 175. Now, I know, I know everybody's a big day. Uh, this, might as well just lay it on thick, this one. I ain't going to hide this one. And uh, 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 coming up in November, and I've been doing this a long time, since I was 18 years old. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, listen to me. I've seen a lot of people. I've had people come to me. I've had people ask me. They'll say, Brother Danny, I'm struggling. I know. I know what you young men go through. I know what you young ladies go through. I know the, the men better because I am one. And I don't know all the, the, the way the devil hits a girl, but I know how he hits a boy. And he'll put thoughts in your head. And he'll put thoughts in your head. And he'll put thoughts in your head. And if you're not careful, every man in here, listen to me. If you're not careful, you'll be sort of like a, little, a hypocrite because you got this little sin that gets in your heart and in your life. Oh, you're maybe not out here doing anything outwardly, but that sin and that lust and that uh, wickedness, that pride or that jealousy or something is in your heart. And you, know, and you say, you know it's wrong. And you say, Lord, forgive me. And then it's right back the next day. And you say, Lord, forgive me. And it's right back the next day. And you say, Lord, forgive me. And it's right back the next day. And the, you know, the Lord forgive me. And then sometimes you feel like a hypocrite when you get up here and sing the choir. You feel like a hypocrite uh, when you want to give a testimony. You feel like a hypocrite because you're saying, Lord, this sin, this sin. This sin, this sin, this sin. And I'm telling you, the, that ain't, you don't have to live like that. I'm not saying you can be perfect. I'm not saying you can be sinless and keep evil thoughts. I'm not saying that at all. I am saying, I am saying, sin does not have to rule over you and rule your life. You'll, you're not going to be perfect in this world, but you don't have to live defeated and the life of a hypocrite at where you got all kind of lust and wicked in your heart all the time and then trying to act like everything things all right you know what you need to do pray and fast and spend time with God and get the victory over that and I don't mean sinless perfection don't get discouraged don't say well brother Danny I said you, you can quit sinning I didn't say that I didn't say that ladies same with you your attitude whatever the devil tempts y'all with uh wanting attention I guess <laughs> that's what the, most most women want a man that, that's crazy over her. That, I guess that's not wrong, but uh, unless you carry it to the to the extreme. And uh, I've been studying that over in Isaiah. Well, you want some scripture? You know that third chapter of Isaiah where them women go walking mincing with their feet. And what is that, buddy? Look up them wimples and them uh, uh, crisping pins. But y'all don't know what a wimple or a crisping pin or a mantle or the round tires like the moon. All that is where a woman walks like this, you know, like, here I am. Everybody look at me with her neck stretched up there like an ostrich. I, I like she's a, a, a God's gift, you know, the Hollywood or something. And the, I don't know what the devil tempts y'all ladies with. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's uh, insecurity. Maybe it's uh, uh, doubt. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's uh, uh, insecurity about yourself or your body. You don't feel like you look attractive or whatever. And my, I don't know. But whatever the devil is, you're not, you're not going to get victory over that staying on your phone all night and all day. Get in, the, get in the closet and say, Lord, you do what ought to be done in my life. Listen, if you're happy and satisfied with the Lord, it really don't matter about what kind of car you have to drive or uh, maybe you don't have new clothes or maybe your house ain't brand new. It don't matter if you get your peace and your joy and your satisfaction from the Lord. It really don't matter. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it. You, you, uh, it's how to fight and win personal struggles. I look back now. I was trying to think about this, this evening. And I looked back and I said, when did I win the biggest victories in my Christian life? One time I was up in the woods when I was very, very early 20s. One time I was at uh, another guy's house that I, I was staying with while I was preaching or something. I was staying with, and I was in the bedroom, in the bed, and I remember I felt God give me the victory over some stuff. And all the other times is when I was in my prayer closet by myself. That's how you get it. That's how you get it. 
Well, Brother Danny, I've got to be at work. And it's so hard for me to get up. Now, if you go to bed early enough, it ain't. You go to bed early enough tonight and get up 30 minutes early tomorrow and spend that time with God. Amen. George Mueller prayed for 57 years for, I think, five men. You know this story. And two of them got saved. And then about 10 years later, another one got saved. 57 years. And he died. And two of them still wasn't saved. And they got saved not long after he died. Because George Mueller got alone with God. Just him and God. That's how he claimed the victory. I would not tonight take a million dollars for my private time with the Lord. If you said, Danny, I'll give you a million dollars cash tonight. If you'll quit doing that, I'd say, you, you can jump in Lake Jane, buddy. A million dollars ain't nothing compared to knowing that the Lord's helping you and He's with you. And I mean, I ain't trying to sound like that ain't just preacher talk. I mean it. I mean it. The years of thy life be many. Here's what you can do. Is there a commandment to be obeyed? I think some of y'all, your problem is you see everybody else's sin, but you don't see yours. I know what my sins are. I know what my sin. I told Kelly. You mean you told your wife? What? Yeah, she knows it anyway. Your wife knows yours. Your husband knows yours. You might as well be honest about it. She acted like she was shocked that I confessed her. I, I had doubts about stuff. and th Sometimes I doubt a lot. And the devil uses that on me. I doubt lots of stuff. I doubt sunshine. You know, I, and and that can be good. can be good. But it can be bad. And But the devil uses that on me. And I confessed it to her the other day. And I said, hey, you know what? what what's your, your sin? What is your sin? What is your sin? Everybody in here who knows what your sin, what the devil really uses on you, if you knew that, I want to your hand. Okay? Okay? That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I don't care. We've all got something that the devil uses on us. We just might as well be honest tonight and say, Lord, I know that's a devil. I know that I'm prone to that. I know it could be a temptation to drink or whatever, or, or whatever. I don't know. Any, anything's wrong. Anything, or it could be just not caring. You know, not caring and unbelief is is wicked. When we doubt the Lord, like me doubting, that's a wicked thing to do. Man, I got my mind analyzes. I analyze everything. I run it through this, and what about that? And what about that? Yeah, but what about this? What? And that can be good, but it, the devil can use it too. Usually the devil takes what is your really strong point and he'll use it against you if you ain't careful. If you're really smart or if you're really dumb, he'll use that on you. He will. He really will. Or if, and if you're really talented, if you're really talented or good looking or beautiful, the devil will use that on you. I talked to a guy the other day and I, I said, you know, y'all, got, you got to, your family sings and you're all beautiful and talented. That's a, curse man That's a, you talk about the devil using it on somebody now it can be a blessing but it can also be a curse the devil whatever your strong point is the devil you turn it right around and use it on if you ain't careful so what I want to say to you tonight I, I, I told you this wasn't going to be great but I'm telling you from my heart I'm asking everybody in here get you a time get you a time I think it's a great idea for husbands and wives to Read the Bible together like some of y'all do. I think that's wonderful. I, I, that's wonderful. But you still got to do it by yourself. You still got to spend time by yourself. Kids going off to school, there you go, right then, ladies. Um, you say, well, I don't have that privilege, Brother Danny. I work a job and my kid. Okay, get earlier in the morning, go to bed earlier at night, put the kids in the bed. There's got to be some time when it's just you and him. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Amen. Luca, come on up here just a second. And I want him to pray and play and we're going to do something here tonight. We'll take just a minute here tonight to every person will say, Brother Danny, you're right. You're right. I get so busy that I neglect 
my private time with the Lord. Let's get in the altar. Come on. Let's get in the altar here tonight and let's let's do that. Go ahead, Luke, play something. Oh God. Amen. If you're too busy for the Lord, friend, you're too busy. If you're too busy for God, you're too busy. You need to cut something out. Amen. That's right. Come on, ladies. Mamas are up here. Daddies are up here. Amen. Amen. You've got to have it. It's your lifeline. You'll backslide. You'll backslide. You might keep coming to church and acting like everything's all right, but you will backslide if you don't spend time with God. I promise you. I promise you, you will. Put on a good front, but you'll backslide. Oh, God. Please, Lord, bless this service tonight. Lord, I pray that tonight, every one of us here tonight, our, our heart will be in that secret place of prayer. Lord, like Abraham did when he got up early in the morning and went to that special place where he met with you. Help us. Everybody here, help that housewife who's got kids in school and got to give bath tonight and get homework done and, and being rushed in the morning and then maybe even have to go work a job. Please bless her, Lord. Bless that dear lady here tonight and give her, give her time alone with you. Bless that man that's got to get up three, four, five in the morning and work all day long. Got to come home. He'll be so tired tomorrow evening. He can't even stay awake to read the Bible. Lord, bless him and make it possible. Work that he, he can have time to read the Word of God. Help us, Lord, we pray. God, help us, God. Please, Lord, bless our church. Lord, I pray that our church will be a group of people. That every one of us has a personal walk and a personal time and a personal relationship with you. Thank you for our young people. Thank you, Lord, for dedicated young people. Lord, I know they're all struggling. And I know the devil fights every one of them. And I know he puts wickedness and sin in front of them seven days a week. God, I pray you give them the victory. And Lord, give them time to spend with you. to Give the victory over sin. Lord, we know, God, that uh, uh, sin ain't supposed to reign over us and rule over us. Help us, God, to rule. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, in tonight, amen. Some still praying tonight. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray as long as you need to. All right. Amen. All right. I just wanted to pass that on to y'all tonight. I hope you took it in the spirit that in my heart was trying to deliver it. I hope you did. All right. Uh, he, he still ain't ready. Might want to end this with a big Bible verse. You want Dax to come and do it for you? Okay. Dax, come up here and quote the whole third chapter of Genesis, please. <laughs> you get out here and ride a motorcycle in front of a thousand people. Y'all be able to quote a chapter of the Bible. Amen. Amen. No, no, y'all pray for him. I guess he's going back tomorrow, right? Amen. That's that's full. That's a job. It ain't, ain't that's not a sport, it's a job now. Like Tim Tebow. Uh, but uh anybody? Is he, he going to wait, Chris? Come on, Big T. He's not ready. All right, we'll give him another one. All right, Amen. All right, we're going. I got a lot to do, so let's let's uh, go ahead and, and break up here now. Look, if you're going Saturday night with us to Salisbury, let me know. But we got to decide if we're going to take a small bus. We're just going to take some cars. I got to tell them how many how much food to fix for us. Uh, Brother Ronnie and some of them from Rockingham are coming. Actually, I got to drive to Virginia and preach Friday night uh, at the Jubilee, Brother Larry's church. I was supposed to be in there Friday and Saturday night. It's his Jubilee that he has every year. Me and Brother Gene be preaching on Friday night. And uh, uh, But I'll I'll just drive up there and drive back. I ain't got no choice. So I'm going to do a lot of driving Friday and then uh, uh, go visiting Saturday morning and then preaching in Salisbury Saturday night. The Lord always blesses me. When I put forth that extra effort, and I told Brother Larry, I said, I'll, I'll do that for you. And he really wanted me to come, so I'm going to do it. I've always thought if, I, if God opens the door for me to preach, and I can, I should. 
Amen. All right. Okay. All hearts clear. Amen. All right. Got that Bible. I, Dak said he wanted uh, uh, Paisley to do his Bible verse. Paisley, you learn a Bible verse, ain't you? You know they learn a Bible verse at school? <laughs> My goodness, what are we paying them people for? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They learn Bible verses in Christian school. All right, Roy might do his. Want to do one, Roy? Come on, man. You learn, have y'all learned the Bible verse this year? You ain't? Oh, Lord. You, you're supposed to. You learn one that's trick. Oh, that's right. She, I keep forgetting she graduated. Kerrigan knows her? Do you know? She knows hers. All right. Amen. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go. I, I, uh, you're dismissed. God bless you. Fellowship a little bit. Be friendly. I don't know if it's still raining or not, but be careful. Be careful getting out of here.